I got a comment from Jackie R saying he wanted to see the deformed bone setup because I asked if somebody wanted to see it. I guess, well, this is for you, Jackie R. So what we've got, uh, let's talk about the controls for a moment. So on every finger and, and her thumb, there's a little green control here. If I grab that control, it moves essentially the meta metacarpal uh, for that finger. Well, for her thumb, it moves the metacarpal. For her finger, it moves that first, uh, I don't know what you call it, digit? No, not digit. I forget what that bit is called, a little segment here between the knuckles. So this one moves that. It actually does move the metacarpal a little bit as well, uh, but only a little bit, just to kind of give a sense of um, that uh, tendon moving. So if you look when I'm moving this, you can actually see down here a little bit of deform happening. Let's zoom way in here so I can see that. Very little amount of deform. And if we do the little finger, you can see the same thing, deform happening all the way in there. And ring finger, same thing. And middle finger, uh, more more than the others, but uh, same concept. All right, so that's the control if you grab it. If you grab it, also you can move the finger sideways and, and stuff like that. Just basically has full freedom for moving the finger around. If you rotate it, then it starts rotating the uh, rotating this bone here, and I believe these other bones follow. Uh, we're going to find out here in a second when we look at the constraints. And uh, then that that is most of the power you need to control the fingers, but that definitely doesn't do everything, right? There are some things fingers can do that's not that. Uh, but before we'll go and start looking at what's going on with the other bits, there's a uh, what I call a meta controller that controls everything. So this control here, I'm going to grab it and un ungrab it and rotate it, unscale it here. Uh, if I grab it, then what it does is it moves every one of these controls a little bit. And so if I move this on its y-axis, those others move, I believe it is also on their y-axis, but again, we'll figure out here in a second. And if I move it in these directions, it basically takes all those fingers and moves them around. So what we're doing there is, is taking this movement and translating it to each one of those controls. And if I rotate it, then it rotates all of those controls. And so when I move this, that happens. When I rotate it, that happens. Well, then the same thing. When I move this, all the fingers move. And when I rotate it, all the fingers rotate. And so you can get some, uh, you can get a fairly um, complete sort of look from that just that control there. If I scale it, then what happens is these other fingers are moving, but really when I scale it, all it does is cause this control here to rotate. When that control rotates, that's for moving the uh, metacarpals. Um, and so it mainly moves the little finger metacarpal and then it moves each one of the metacarpals the next two a little bit less and less each time. So if I take the entire hand, let's unpause everything. So this is, this is by default the way the hand looks, right? And so if I take this control here and then move it or rotate it, then you can see that is what happens there. And it rotates on all axes, so I can stretch your hand out or squeeze it together or move it around in all these different directions. So um, another thing that I should finally mention is if we take her wrist and we turn it, you might notice right here her fingers are pointed pretty straight out, but when it turns up here, they're kind of curved. Now this is this is what happens if you're with your own hand. If you relax your hand but do this, you'll see your fingers straighten out when you turn your wrist like that, and your fingers curl when you do it like that. So I automated that a little bit, but if somebody doesn't like that automation, they can always just uh, turn off the constraint to do that. So that's this one right here. If they turn that constraint off, then the fingers won't, uh, won't do that anymore. They'll just stay the way they are. And that's important if you ever hold in something. Uh, so let's see, I'll go ahead and turn that constraint on because I do like the effect of when she rotates her hand, the fingers do the same thing, or not do the same thing, do the opposite, right? Okay, so let's see how that is working. So we'll go ahead and come over here to the layers and turn on minor controls and arms and hands. So what this now does is show every control that's in her hand. So the first thing to know is the wrist. There's a, a set of bones here. Basically, uh, you know, the end of her arm ends here and her hand starts over here and I've got these two bones in between. And each one of these bones has a copy Y rotation of the hand controller. That's this one right here. So as I rotate that, it copies the Y location or Y rotation of that. And then it also copies the Z rotation, uh, X and Z rotation, sorry. But the reason I have these in two different ways is I want that Y rotation copy at a, a greater strength than the X and Z. And it isn't much different here, but uh, this allows me to tweak those differently. And the X and Z is definitely different uh, when it comes to the wrist than the Y. And so there's that. So the transformation also, what I do is, uh, let's see here, there's a wrist angle calculation. Oh, I don't think I have that showing here. Uh, there's another bone I suppose I might have to find. It's probably going to be in uh, mechanisms here. Okay, so right here I've got a bone that is, I believe it's a child of the forearm. And so if we go take a look at this here, we don't need many bones. Child of deaf forearm L 
0.004, basically down here towards the bottom, right? So it's a child basically attached right here. And what it is doing, it is stretching to the control hand. And the control hand, uh, you can't tell because I've got the shapes here, but um, let's actually highlight that control hand here and go take a look. So that's this one here. So you notice the control actually goes a fair distance down into the hand here. And so when uh, it's bent, uh, this control here, you can't tell because of the shape, it's flat, but it goes way up here to the hand. So you can see this bone here is stretching from here to there. And the reason we want that is so that we can tell how much her wrist is bent in which direction. And so that is going to be important because uh, the more that the hand uh, is, the more that the wrist is bent, the more we want to do something. What do we want to do? So uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking the input scale from 0.5 up to 1. So that means it'll only ever shrink, right? If, if the bone shrinks to half scale or to the full scale, it doesn't matter if it gets longer, it only matters if it gets shorter. Then what I'm going to do is also scale this bone right here. So if we unclick this, you'll see the scale changed, or, or I should say like, it kind of squeezed in. So you see the wrist has lost some volume here. So what this is doing is letting us keep some volume of the wrist here. And you'll notice the scale here, that it's taking the Y uh, scale of, the, of that mechanism bone up here, and that's translating it to only the Z axis, right? So the Z axis will double its uh, scale if this one has its scale. So uh, that, what, and you'll want to play with those numbers yourself. But basically all that does is keep the, uh, uh, keep the volume of the wrist there. So a very important bit there. The next bone up is uh, also copying the location of that one. So it'll all be, always be in the right place. And if you take a look, you'll see it's not a child of uh, that one. It's a child of the forearm. So that's why we want to copy the location to make it uh, always be there. And then we want to copy the Y rotation and we want to damp track it to the control. And so basically this control ends up up here. This is damped tracking at. So it's now at this point of the uh, hand, it's pointing wherever the control goes. And this one is not pointing all the way to the control because if you see, remember, the uh, copy of uh, X and Z rotation is only 0.75. So it's not going to be pointing all the way. Let's collapse that down so we don't see so much of that anymore. Okay, so what's the next? So that basically just tells you all what's going on with our wrist there. All right, so what's the next thing? So we have some controls. I'm going to turn off the hand and uh, the hands um, deform bones for a moment because now there are also these other controls here. And if this control, uh, the way that control works is it does a damp track to the uh, to this index here. But uh, oh, right, that does mean I can't modify it afterward. Okay, so uh, I may want to change that. I may want someone to be able to uh, change these bones after I've done automation on them. But definitely uh, the next bones you can tweak manually, right? I can grab this one and rotate it. And that way I can uh, I can rotate these uh, fingers to be um, more how, however I want them if they're going to be doing something that this control doesn't allow here. There we go. Uh, and so every one of these, uh, every one of these first sections of the finger do a damp track to their related control here. So they're always going to be pointing straight at it. The next bone down does a limit rotation. So I, I basically just don't want uh, don't want us to be able to rotate the uh, Y or Z much at all, right? Because this is a po influence of point going forward. But I will let the X, uh, which is the X rotation is the bending of the finger like that, right? And so that, I want to go ahead and let that happen uh, for a great deal forward and not very much back. So if I go back to here, you see it kind of stops there. It stops, but I can keep pushing it a little bit further using the, uh, by trying to push. And so that's that. what this uh, limit notation does for us here. It just basically keeps the finger from going too far in, in bad directions. So if I try and rotate it like this, it'll not go this, you know, off axis of that joint there. The other thing it does is it has this curl manual. What that does is just as this controller rotates, this one also rotates. You can, so you can see here, it's copying the X, Y, and Z rotation of that um, control index all segments. That's this one right here, right? Control index all segments. And so, uh, and so it copies that, uh, but, but because I have a mix of after original, that means I can twist it, I can rotate it like that, but then I can grab it here and rotate it in a different direction. So it's either way, I can grab that bone or I can, um, or I can uh, use this controller. And then the same thing with this one, uh, it, will, it, it also has a limit rotation. Uh, I can only rotate it in one, in one of the directions very far and the other one not very far. And it also follows the curl manual of this control here.
So now the thing to mention is all these other all these other controls on these fingers are exactly the same as those. And so you, if once you set up one finger, setting up the other four is easy. Uh, so the other thing to note is this controller itself will copy the rotation of control all fingers. And that's this one right here, control all fingers. So as I rotate that, then these other controllers also rotate. And so that's how you get all the fingers uh, working at the same time. Then the other thing I have here is uh, limit the distance. I don't want it to go very far from the metacarpal. This is the metacarpal right here. Um, and so I don't want the control to fly off into some area and be hard to see. So that's why I have that limit distance to keep it from going very far. That's everything there. The thumb is pretty much just like the fingers, except you have one less uh, segment, but you know, you rotate this, it'll cause the rotation of this, this other uh, bone here, I suppose. Uh, I do copy the rotation more than once because I found that I rotate, I can't rotate it enough if I don't add an extra. So in Blender, you can't say you want to have an influence greater than one, one is the max. So if you want to influence greater than one, you just copy the rotation more than once of the exact same thing. And so that happens. And then we have this final bone here, which also copies the rotation more than once. And so that lets me rotate the, the thumb like that in those ways. And so, and when I grab it, it's the same thing. This, this bone here has a down track to it right there. Uh, and it goes, uh, looks like it rotates on the rotates on the X based on right control thumb all segments. That's this one right here. Right. Okay. So right. If I, well, that's interesting. I don't see how that. I don't think these. Okay. I think what happened here was I copied the constraints from here up to this, but I don't actually need those constraints because it doesn't matter what rotation happens. It finishes with a damp track. So those constraints don't do anything. So we're going to go ahead and delete those constraints. We may as well delete them on the other side because I better have them there too. Right, we don't need those, that is not necessary. Okay, so that is the whole setup of the controls. These are all controls so far, no deforming bones. So let's go turn the deforming bones back on and see what they look like, deform bones. Uh, so if you look at the, uh, you look here, there's um, a red bone. The red bone is very close to the green bone, but you see it's not quite exactly overlaid. And the reason is there is a tendon show uh, constraint on that bone, and it's copying the X location of the index finger, and it's doing it at a very low weight, 0.1. That way, when I take this finger and rotate it in different directions, then this uh, other bone here will go along. And then I just do the same thing for all the other four fingers. And I don't have any similar concept for the thumb. It's just for the four fingers here. So there's that bit there. Uh, it also is control, copying the location of control all fingers. What is the control all fingers, that's this one right here. Ah, right, because I clicked the control, sorry. I had confused myself. I clicked the control, I suppose that's this right here, and I was thinking I was still on the deformed bone. On the deformed bone, I only have that one constraint to copy the, the um, rotation of that other uh, control bone down here. And then the other thing is I don't want that tendon to move very much. It only want, I only want it to move six degrees before it stops. And 0.8, so it can go a little bit further. And that's how that is all set up there. Then if we take a look at the uh, deformed bone here, so this deformed bone, all it does is uh, copy the location of the controller, the rotation of the controller, and those uh, uh, squish volume. So we'll talk about that in a second. Now why I don't just copy um, transforms, there is a constraint you can do that copies all transforms. And for some reason, when I do that, copy transforms, uh, the bones do some weird things occasionally. And I don't remember the situation, but I remember it happens, I don't like it. So I copy just the location and the rotation of that control bone here. The other thing is squish volume. What is squish volume? It means when the control of the index L.001, which I believe is this one here, let's just make sure. There we go, control index L.001. Yep, that is the one. Let's go back to this one. So when that one rotates on its um, X axis up to 90 degrees, then this deformed bone will scale on its, uh, I believe it's Z axis. Yes, it is on its Z axis, which is in this case, uh, the, um, is that correct? Yes, it's to the right and the left. And so what happens then is as this finger is, is pulling in like that, this bone is, uh, widening and so you probably don't even notice it because it's a very subtle effect and you see it so often in your life that it's something you expect you don't notice it growing so that happens there it happens in all of these they all have this squish volume and so that they'll they'll grow correctly when uh, when the fingers are are, to, are turning right and so I believe I have that same thing on the next one down let's take a look right finger squish there and so as the next bone here uh, rotates in 
this bone here, as that rotates in, this one will also uh, change its, oh wait, what am I looking at here? This is not, I believe this is a copy rotation. Yes, this copies rotation, right? It's copying the rotation in the, um, in the opposite direction. So as this one rotates this way, this one is rotating that way. And you can actually see that here. You'll see that this bone is like moving away from the, its control bone. It starts by copying the uh, control location. I believe that's a location there. No, that's rotation. And that is also rotation. So it's copying the rotation twice of the same one. Now this is kind of interesting. I don't know why I did that. Why didn't I just do 0.1? I suppose this adds up to a little over 0.1. So maybe that's the uh, the reason why it's actually been a little bit. But, uh, and basically what I'm doing is I'm just copying the rotation of this uh, this other control so that it points in the same direction. But then in the end, I'm undoing the rotation a little bit depending on how much this uh, this bone is rotated. So you can kind of see that happening there. And so what that is is pushing all that mass out as the finger turns in like that. And again, I do that just with all the fingers. So every finger has an exact same setup like that. And so that is pretty much a complete overview of all the controls and uh, deformed bones and the constraints. There are no drivers, and I don't use any um, uh, weight painting or um, sheep keys or anything. This is just all straight bones. And I think I, it was pretty good, for a, at least for a, uh, a stylized character.